Gates in studio with the Admiral Bill Stubblefield, New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap, and a salute to the two young ladies from Spring Mills High School for uh, articulating their point uh, very well, and best of luck to them as they attempt to get their voices heard in Charleston, which is uh, not always an easy thing to do. So good luck to them. Good luck. Especially yeah. not during these last couple of yeah. weeks. Yeah. They, they're busy people. Yeah, they were very impressive young ladies. The fact they're willing to become engaged, they have an issue they want to address, I think they're doing it the right way. So I applaud them. And if they're reflective of the other students, um, we've got a bunch of great young kids coming up. If they're reflective of all of the other students, then the issue is dead. We don't have a problem. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, the person who is in charge of all these students in the school, that's a, an awesome responsibility to have 20,000 students that you have to answer to and their families and all the teachers. And do and all those them. report cards. I know, it's, a, it's an amazing <laughs> responsibility. It's more than one person should be able to handle, in fact. They probably break that job into three or four different parts, I think. Yeah. We were talking about a bully in the last group. Uh, the way you described, Ron, you may want to add another adjective to it. Amazing. Astounding. <laughs> Supernatural. <laughs> our, our guest in this segment is the superintendent of schools, Ron Stevens. Ron, good morning to you, buddy. Thanks for coming in. Good morning, guys. How are you doing this morning? Very well, thanks, Ron. I tell you, those two uh, young ladies from Spring Mills are very impressive. They're very impressive young ladies. They did a nice job, which uh, will then uh, lead to our first question to you, and that is in regards to school discipline. So we know in the last session a bill was passed to put a little bit more latitude in the hands of uh, the schools to deal with kids who are problems in the classroom. Uh, some of the legislators complained that it just the schools chose to not enact it. And when discussing that, some of the answers I got, well, there weren't any enough funds to deal with removing, removing kids from schools. What do we do with them? That sort of thing. So, Ron, tell me, right now in Berkeley County, what do we do with children who are problems in the classroom? Wow, that's... Um... I think one of you mentioned that we we're going to solve all the problems in 30 minutes. I, that that technically has, 22. That's what we're <laughs> okay. 22. Cut the time down. That that is a um, that is a massive uh, ask. That's a that's a large responsibility. Schools take that very seriously. Uh, as a matter of fact, on Monday evening we had a um, presentation at our um, most recent board meeting about um, the services that are provided through our transitional program, um, the alternative school for, for students. Is that Mr. Long? Uh, that is Mr. Marquette. Mr. Marquette, okay. Yeah, Mr. Marquette um, uh, in his 55th year in education, by the way. Um, and our, our transitional program deals with such students. Um, it is... Um, designated for students that are in in sixth grade and up our our secondary students uh if they're if students are 10 years old they could qualify for that even if they're not in sixth grade but um you know i feel like we're 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 handling that very well uh at the secondary level i know that we've um we've pointed to the pandemic and coming back from the pandemic the way students um have some learned behaviors uh, that that they acquired over the pandemic and coming back into classes and having difficulty. Um, but I think that we're handling things well. I think what this uh, the bill we're referring to is Senate Bill 614, I believe, right, I Senator Grady's? Yes. Um, yeah, it's um, it's specifically designed for elementary students. And, you know, ironically, you've got a, um, you know, a situation where we, we've got um, – a majority of the students that are in K through six have spent a, a couple of years with interrupted education. Um, everything, you know, with the times and um, you know the way social media is uh, is is becoming such a um, a large issue and gobbles up a lot of our students' time and it influences the way that they behave. And then you couple that with time away from school that is a structured social environment where they learn to interact with other other people. You know, I think if you talk to anybody that deals with students or deals with young people, it was anticipated that they were going to come back with some with some difficulty. I don't think anybody anticipated um, the level of concern that we that we would be be having at this point. But I do commend everyone for trying to trying to come up with a, a solution to it, and I think that Senator Grady's um, bill, you know, while I 
you know, I, I agree with some of the, uh, quite a lot, as a mm-hmm. matter of fact, of the things that the young lady spoke about. Um, I think it, it will address and help uh, shine a light on uh, behavior issues that we're, that we're seeing in kindergarten through sixth grade. Lita Shepard texted me and said the Senate bill did pass the House. The it, Senate committee is at the House Ed Committee right now, so it is, it's yep. it's in so House it's Education. Out, out of the Senate to the House. Correct. Yeah, exactly. I believe it passed 32 to 1. Uh, in that, um, mm-hmm. and the one dissenting vote was uh, Senator Trump, and he uh, said that he actually agreed with just about everything in the bill except the um, the funding part of it, and he felt like it needed a little bit more. The yeah. the funding issues are yeah. about setting up the alternative learning centers or whatever we call them. Yeah, well, they're in in this. And that was one of the things. I, I tell you, I was so impressed with those young ladies. Um, Absolutely. I actually was smiling and was sending messages about how well uh, they were on the on the radio. I was out here in the parking lot and almost missed my segment because I was <laughs> I was <laughs> sending flowers all around about them. Um, but you know, the definitions that are included uh, need to be defined and um you know when they were talking about bullying and the different terms that were included in there i think you're referring to behavior intervention programs um and the fact that it says if a, if a county doesn't have that well then you just ship them to a county that does well those are very difficult to come by um you know we we do send students that have issues in classes to alternative settings um we have an increased number of students with special needs. We have an increased number of students that um, have behavior issues that um, you know, are, are interrupting uh, class time. And we're trying to keep that class time as sacred as we can. So you know, we're all looking for something like this, but there's not a magic, there's not a magic bean for any of this. When it comes to issues of education, I always think that it, even when when people are in disagreement, everybody's trying to do the right thing. Everybody's a good guy in in this fight. And where I find it frustrating, um, my my son is well beyond the school age. But even you know when he was coming up through, the system is not designed for the well behaved, solid B student who comes to school every day. They're the ones that, that it feels as a parent. It felt mm-hmm. like they got lost. That all of the attention goes to the you know the 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 super smart or the the troubled kids and right but the vast majority of the taxpayers who are sending their kids to schools are the the good kids solid b who just kind of doesn't get the benefit of things you know you said something there that the system is not designed for that and and I'll beg to differ i think that the system was designed for that and where we're having a problem is the system was not originally designed for the other part and you know those students that are basically being forced to school and forced into classes um um, and we're in a cycle where their parents didn't have a good experience in school so they're not uh, naturally um supporters of school to begin with because they didn't have a good experience and i mean it's it's a cycle that you really are trying to break um and then you throw in their time away from school and um you know i know everybody uses the pandemic as an excuse and we're going to have that uh as a cloud over us until the group of students that went through that has has exited school um so you know we've got another decade to 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 solve some of these issues the the uh, young ladies that spoke earlier you know were talking about how they felt like at the high school level and their experiences that they were um they were able to get back to the to the norm relatively quick quickly well that's because they had a number of years in what we call the norm beforehand and you know you talk about students that are in third or fourth grade right now um they have had just as much interruption in their education as they've had consistency. So I think the key to education is consistency from kindergarten through and pre-K, actually, through 12th grade. Um, and any disruption to that is going to cause problems. That, you know, That's why our elementary students right now are struggling. Two things, Ron. One, that's a great point. I have not heard anybody bring up yet before. And two, you've totally called out 
gills drop twice and smack him basically across <laughs> that the head. That was not intended. Like, Come on, this is yeah, beautiful. Yeah, not keep intended. that up. Bill and I will just sit back and watch. We feel good about that, Ron. <laughs> Maria, Ron. Maria, I have Maria. your back. Yeah, let me, Ron, Ron let, me, let me go to Pacifics uh, and Pacifics with this uh, uh, Senate Bill 614 that's passed out of the Senate. It's been looked at the House. I want to read one sentence, one statement there, and it has a couple of points that I think we need uh, that I'd be interested in how you're going to address. Uh, the legislators find that isolating students and placing them in an alternative learning center may be the best setting for chronically disruptive students. Two questions. One, is the definition of chronically, chronically disruptive students in question? Is there a legal issue that you have to look at and address? The second question is, in Berkeley County, how do you address or how do you handle the alternative learning centers, both for the elementary and the high school? Because this, I think, is one of the core issues. Both of those statements are the core issue of the Senate Bill 614. Okay, I, I'm going to need you to go back to the right, the very beginning. Ian, what, what was that first part? The legislator finds that isolating students and placing them in alternative learning centers may be the best setting for chronically disruptive students. Okay, what does that sound like to you? When well, you isolate a student, <laughs> yeah, yeah. put them in a put a, put them in isolation. You know, it's it's in their best interest. It sounds like we're selling the fact that we're we're going to take these students who have as the, you know, again the um, the ladies that spoke this morning spoke very eloquently on the fact that we have students that have mental health issues. Um, I have never been a proponent of of one hundred percent support of suspension from school and isolating those students who need it the most. They need the interaction, the inner, um, the, the socialization. You know, remember what our goal is. Our goal is, and I, I spoke to incoming freshmen for a decade when I was a, a high school principal, and I said, my goal is to have you become successful citizens in this community. I can't do that if you're not here. You know, so if we isolate these students, you know, basically we get back to the point of, we're, we're now valuing the other students' educations over theirs. Now, I agree when they become disruptive, it, it's very hard to be patient with them. You know, I'm a father of three boys who had, who were very independent uh, thinkers, um, you know, been in education for 30 plus years. I know what, uh, of what you speak. And I do think that there is a place for suspension, but it is only to uh, allow people to, to, uh, recenter, allow the students in the class to get back on track, allow the teacher in the class to get back on track, to give a moment, a brief time for the student that was disrupting to be addressed about that. And the issue that we face is, you know, are the parents going to agree? We're running into more and more parents that disagree when uh, a student is suspended, wanting to um, say that it's going to do harm to their, their child and they disagree with the school system, so it makes it harder uh, to be able to do that. And what ends up happening is it, it you end up putting that disciplinary measure off over a period of time until it's just so serious you have to do it, and we're almost waiting too long. I, th I think the interventions have to take place sooner, and I'm not sure that isolating them away from their peers uh, is, is going to be the best route. In some cases, it may be. What is the best route for the for most of these students, disruptive students? Well, um, a, a snapshot of what we currently have in our transitional program. It's called transitional because the goal is for them to transition back in to their educational setting with their peers. Um, and we want to address their, uh, their behaviors. We want to address what's causing those behaviors. We have counselors, social workers, um, and, and administrators that are meeting with students and parents at our transitional school level. Um, and all of the students that are there will deal with over between two and 300 students this year that have committed expellable offenses. And if they were left un, unmeasured, they would end up being expelled from school. So we, we pull them out, put them in an alternative setting, uh, address their behaviors, we, and continue the educational process. It is a tedious process. Uh, and to do that for elementary age students, um, 
it, it's just very difficult when you're when you're dealing with someone who is a little bit older. You're waiting for that aha moment for them to take responsibility, and um, you know that's that's what we strive for during that transition period to get them back in the elementary level. Their students just aren't old enough to have that aha moment yet, and um, you know that's what we're struggling with. So as difficult as it is in Berkeley County, I would think it'd be even more compound, compounded in McDowell County or some of the more rural, isolated counties. You, you know, it's resources are difficult all around. Um, we we've maxed out all of the facilities that we have access to right now. We've got waiting lines for. Um, students with behavior issues, mental issues, uh, social issues. Um, you know, we we have um, you know it's and it's not facilities um, fault necessarily, um, but they've had to circle the wagons and, and reduce some some access as well. You know, there are some that are even in our county right now that we had as as alternative. Um, I don't want to say solutions, but uh, attempts at solutions that um, are, are just not taking students right now. So you know, we're we're waiting here, even though we're a large county with a lot of resources. In McDowell County, uh, it may only take one person to come up with a, a small thing. So I don't want to say it's easier or harder in, at one of the two places, but what we have now is maxed out. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, no. It, it, I'm... I've reached the age where I'm a certified curmudgeon, okay? And, and the way things were done when I was growing up was, was not so bad. So when we talk about expellable offenses, is it, for example, an expellable offense for a high school student to sneak out back and, and have a beer or smoke a cigarette? Not the first time that they do that. Okay. That is not expellable. And repeat offenses? I, the point I'm getting a, at... A repeat is, offense could be. The... Is it possible that we have invoked too many rules and too many restrictions on what kids can and cannot do? Again, from the curmudgeon point of view, there's there's uh, there are a lot of fun police that are out there, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of um, not not allowing kids <clears throat> kids to be kids. More specifically, in, in my experience, perhaps because I've only had boys allowing boys to be boys and to act out and to do stuff. Is it possible that we're over enforcing rules that don't necessarily need to be there? And by loosening up on some of those rules, we end up redefining what the problem is and solving some of these issues. Uh, I think you're talking about the proverbial pendulum that swings back and forth. I am. And uh, where we are in that, in that swing right now. Um, is it possible? I, I would have to, you know, looking at the way the pendulum has gone back and forth so many times uh, just in American history. Mm -hmm. um, is it possible? Yes, it is possible. I, th I think we constantly review rules um, and we're constantly putting rules in for that minority uh, group of students that cause disruptions that, that you know, the 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 few students that actually cause those disruptions, um, you know, the majority of the students, a as you said before, they're able to go through with, you know. What, what percentage of the kids are we talking about here, Ron, that well, are disruptive enough that they require some special attention? Um, I did a study many years ago, uh, and the, as I've checked on things, it, 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 it holds true today. Uh, between 88 and 90 percent of students go through uh, a normal high school. Just talking about high school again, not talking about elementary. Uh, they'll go through a normal high school um, and have no more than a tardy to class. You know, when you're talking nine out of ten students, that that is that is their problem. That is their disruption. That's pretty good. Um, then and you've that got drives a, you back to the point John was making. Exactly. Earlier. And then you've got about another. You, you you look at that other ten percent, and of that ten percent, um, uh, seven uh, percent and ninety percent are doing what they're supposed to. About seven percent will do something, um, and there will be some disciplinary measure, and it will correct over a period of time. And they're not what we refer to as major 
disruptors or major offenders. So you're really talking about between 2 and 5%, about 3% uh, um, was in the study that I did. Mm -hmm. Between 2 and 5% are repeat offenders. 1% of those students, 1% of Berkeley County's total students. Um, 20,000. 1% of them are between 1% and 1.5% 1 .1 are being dealt with in our alternative program. And they're the, they're the ones who have committed uh, offenses either continually, as you mentioned, continually breaking mm -hmm. rules, or have, uh, have broken a rule uh, that is expellable uh, at one time. Where we're having difficulty is that other 1.5% that, you know, they're, they're disruptive in class, uh, they're lashing out, they're upset about something, um, and what do we do with them? And that's that's where we're that's where we're struggling. And this comes back to uh, Senate Bill six fourteen, mm -hmm. and uh, certainly uh, Senator Grady has a lot of experience being a fourth grade teacher for many years. She does. Uh, is the do you view six fourteen as needed, as as just kind of a consequence of something that's going to change the way your ability to address these issues? How do you view Senate Bill six fourteen? Well, I choose to look at it as, um, you know, half full versus half empty when I'm when I'm looking at situations like this. And Senate Bill 614, I hope, shines the light on the issues that, that elementary students um, are having, elementary uh, teachers and administrators are having. Um, and somebody comes up with some new solution, a new resource. Uh, the, you know, the, the behavior intervention program, I, I think sounds great, but what's ours? What, you know, what's, what's Morgan County's? What's Jefferson County's? If, if Morgan County doesn't have one or chooses not to have one, are they just going to ship their problems to Berkeley County to, to deal with? Is that going to put more of a, uh, you know, not calling out Morgan County, that's just an example, by the way. Is that going to put more of a burden on us to provide those services that I'm, I'm telling you, they're very difficult to come by. Why not <clears throat> just embrace the problem for what it is, especially at, at the one and a half percent level, and send them home and say, "Mom and Dad, you got a problem. You got to take care of. They're not welcome here anymore. You've burned that bridge. Go figure something out, mm -hmm. and then look away." Why not? That goes back to exactly the same point I was making that. Um, Bill brought up a few minutes ago. The students that we're talking about are this way because they, most of them have issues at home to begin with. Yeah. So you're putting them back in abusive environments at home. They're unsupervised at home. But that's a fixed, that, that's a fixed point. That's, that's a given. They're going there after school and before school anyway. So unless we're going to embrace that separately, Instead that's a constant. But, John, that, that's given up on 1% of our population at no. a very early age. Additionally, there's a constitutional mandate to educate each and every child. Yeah. Is that even an option, Ron? Well, that's, that's the moral dilemma with suspensions to begin with, um, sending a student home and expecting a parent who hasn't had the background, who doesn't, who, who's not a psychologist or psychiatrist or has an education degree uh, who struggled with education, who may not be able to read or write themselves, uh, who's abusive towards students, sending these students back into that environment, that's a personal problem that I have. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that that is the answer, and I would like to strive to find other answers. I do believe that there's a time, as I mentioned before, where having that student out of a, of a setting to to get that setting recentered is important, um, and that's what's so frustrating about it. You're exactly right. It's so frustrating because, you know, you want to protect these these young kids. Remember, you're you're talking about kids that are six, seven, you know, up to eleven years old. We're not talking about young adults yet. They're still impressionable. We believe that we can save them, and maybe that's a problem. But I'd rather believe that I can save them mm -hmm. than than be able to say I gave up on them. Uh, we have time for uh, pr uh, superintendent shout outs here, Rob. Oh, wow. Um, this, this time did fly by fast today. Um, r really, for shout outs, I just wanted to, um, um, first of all, draw attention to um, 
we have we have been doing outreach, community outreach, where stu- uh, community members could talk about the things that we're talking about here today, or what other whatever else is on their mind. Um, our next outreach is scheduled for March the twentieth at five thirty. We um, we ask that uh, people submit questions uh, in advance so that we can look up and and give the proper attention to them rather than just listen and have to get back to people we like to solve uh things on the spot our next meeting is march the 20th at 5 30 at the beddington fire department um and we're going to do another one a little bit later in the year and it will be in the hedgesville uh mm-hmm. area um I, I i wouldn't make it through today without saying uh giving you know i talked about giving flowers out before to the young uh, about the young ladies um from spring mills we had a tremendous program this weekend in berkeley county at the apollo which uh talked about the history uh in the museum the summer sumner raymer uh history the school the documentary uh, the about museum, the museum the documentary it was fantastic and uh during black history month it was couldn't have been more appropriate that was a, a fantastic uh fantastic event and by the way, before you get off that subject, uh, Colin, I think we're airing that at 1 o'clock this afternoon uh, throughout the rest of the week and in the evenings at 8. Is that also correct, Colin? It's, uh, the evenings when we can. Okay. So, But this after, but afternoons at 1 o'clock, you'll be able to see that documentary right here on TV. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. What a collaboration between the, the students, that former students that went to school there and current students, um, you know, put up – you, they were the ones that put all that together, uh, so it was really good. This is Service Personnel Week in, in Berkeley County. We're celebrating um, all week long. Um, our pre-K and kindergarten virtual school uh, and virtual school enrollment, pre-K, kindergarten, and virtual school enrollments are opening soon, so keep tuning to the website, looking for updated uh, times on that. And uh, there is a a snapshot of a parent calendar for next school year. People are calling and asking for the 24-25 school year. There is a uh, um, uh, progress being made on that. It will be released uh, very soon. Hopefully later this week it will be posted on our on our website. So just want to let you know. I appreciate you guys having me in. Um, appreciate your you guys availability. Are doing a great thing. Yeah, appreciate your availability, yep. Ron, as always, man. Thanks.